Terrence Williams with this question. Isaiah Thomas going to the Lakers. It's not even a question. It is just a statement. Last week on the Lakers report by Chat Sports, we did talk about the Lakers' interest in Isaiah Thomas. There's expected to be some interest there as they look to fill out that roster as well. I'm not sure how much Isaiah Thomas is going to give you at this point of his career. Hasn't been the same player since he finished top five in MVP voting back in 2017 when he had that magical season with the Celtics, but that season was cut short because of that hip injury. He can come in off the bench and still score it, but he gives you nothing defensively. Let's move ahead in this mailbag with this question coming in from David Buck. Better fit for the Lakers, Wesley Matthews, Paul Millsap, or J.J. Reddick? Keep up the good work, brother. My guy, appreciate you. The best at-home dad on the chat today. Um, best fit for the Lakers. Wesley Matthews and Paul Millsap are much better defensive players than J.J. Redick. But J.J. Redick is a much better shooter than those two guys. I think that J.J. Redick can still be a marksman from deep. So many injury issues last year for him that were just nagging things. Nothing too serious. J.J. Redick can light it up from a shooting standpoint. He can't defend worth a lick. For the Lakers, I'd like to see Redick on that roster. Not sure he's willing to take a sizable pay cut, but I think Wesley Matthews and Paul Millsap also fit. Speaking of the Lakers, we have a Lakers channel here at Chat Sports that has almost 40,000 subscribers, but also five other channels in addition to the Lakers channel that we have working here at Chat Sports. Warriors, we're almost at 21,000 subscribers. Mavericks, trying to get to 15K. Newer channels, Celtics, Knicks, and Sixers. Here's the crazy thing, and all of them in the Atlantic Division. Let's act like divisions matter in the NBA. We launched our Knicks and Sixers channel about three, four weeks ago, and already Knicks, almost 1,700 subs. Sixers, almost 1,400 subs. Can they catch the Celtics over the next couple of months? We'll see. All of those subscription links have been filtering through the bottom of your screen or they're in the description of this video if you want to subscribe. Jeremy Sherwood Lovehead. Ha 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 ha. Good one right there. I see what you did. What should be Westbrook's role this season with the Lakers? Play point guard. Yeah, Westbrook's going to play point. Uh, is he going to put up a triple-double like he did last year with the Wizards? I'm not sure there are going to be enough opportunities for him to shoot the basketball and score as many points per game, or are there going to be enough rebounding opportunities with LeBron and AD still on the team? Probably not. But Westbrook is going to be your point. If you're asking me, if I'm Frank Vogel sitting in his chair, and you're like, Frank, what is your message to Russell Westbrook? My, mes my message to Russ is this. Russ... At the end of games, don't be reckless. Don't make head-scratching decisions. Don't always push the tempo and go for the kill shot. I want you to be a traditional point guard. Go with the flow. Don't feel as though you need to be Superman at all times. You're playing alongside LeBron and AD. Let those guys go to work and be the third option. Jay Jello, can the Lakers still acquire Buddy Heald, or is that a long shot? It's a long shot because of the money issues. And I did see we got a super chat coming in on our live show, so we'll get to that before the end of this mailbag. But they're not going to be able to acquire Buddy Heald unless somehow they rid themselves of some of the salary cap uh, numbers that they have currently on the roster. It's just not doable. You could have traded for Buddy Heald if you didn't make the trade for Russell Westbrook. But instead, the Lakers, where that Buddy Heald trade got really, really close, elected to go with Russ instead. NBA Now is presented by BetUS. If you like laying down some money on the NBA or the NFL, there's no better deal out there from any sportsbook in the entire world than this deal from our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Head to chatsports.com slash bet. Enter the promo code CHAT125. You get a 125% deposit bonus. So when you deposit $100 in your account, you get $225 of basically free money to wager on. It's the best. NBA champion odds. Maybe you want to put some money down and lay some wagers on this. Nets leading the way at 5-2 to two odds. Lakers at 3-1 to one odds. Bucks at 9-1. to one. Warriors, pretty good value. 11-1 to one odds, meaning if you put a dollar down, you get $11 back if the Warriors win the title. Get those bets in. Lay down those wagers. Put down the lettuce. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code chat125. You have to use that link at the bottom of your screen and that promo code for that deal to apply. 
move ahead in this mailbag with this question from yes. Do you think the Suns finals run last year was a fluke because of injuries? Some people have said that because in the first round, you take on the Lakers when AD is out. Then you go up against the Nuggets and the Nuggets didn't have uh, Jamal Murray. And then you go up against the Clippers in the Western Conference finals and Kawhi doesn't play. But the Suns last year were the number two seed in the West. So are you going to say that that was fluky? Uh, probably not, because they were an excellent story last year, and they were in the basement of the NBA for so long, and mostly because of Chris Paul, but also because James Jones is a great GM. Um, you know, Monty is a great coach, and that roster is very, very talented. That's why they were a factor. Uh, in that NBA title race last year. And I expect them to once again be competing for a championship this upcoming season. So, no, I don't think it was a fluke. I think that's kind of a lame excuse to say it was a fluke because of injuries. For all my homies out there watching, if you're looking at me in this blue shirt and you're like, man, those blue eyes look phenomenal, give me a follow on Twitter, at Chase underscore Senior, because not only can you get some great NBA takes, also cover the NFL here at Chat Sports, but you can interact with me so hit me up, at Chase underscore Senior, slide in my DMs. We keep it loose, we have fun, and we hit you with some hard-hitting analysis, both on the air at Chat Sports and on our Twitter feeds. Rakeem Sports, how effective will Russell Westbrook and Dwight Howard's pick and roll be? Because you know they will try that. Yeah, Dwight Howard can still play too. I thought he was a really good backup for Joel Embiid last year. Uh, yeah, I mean, J Dwight Howard not playing at that MVP caliber level like he was in his prime, but... Dwight has really um, found a way, in an impressive way, to continue his NBA career. I thought two years ago with the Lakers, he was a very important piece on that team that won a title. And the pick and roll game between Russ and Dwight is, uh, can be effective uh, because Dwight can still leap and he can still roll. He can still set some picks and throw down some dunks. And Russell Westbrook has always been a good passer and a good guy of uh, getting to the rim. Anisha Nand, who has the best trio in the NBA? It's the Nets. Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, James Harden. These guys, any given night, are going to be able to pour in 30 points. And isn't it crazy how Kyrie, Kevin Durant, both best friends, both averaged 26.9 points per game last year? I mean, James Harden took offensive sacrifices and didn't have the volume of shots that he usually takes. He still averaged 24.5 points per game. That is stupid. So I don't think it's close. Nets have the best trio. Some might say... You know, the Lakers are in there now with LeBron, AD, and Russ. Uh, maybe the Warriors with Steph, Clay, and Draymond. But Draymond, not a great offensive player. Clay coming off the ACL and Achilles injury. So give me the Nets big three.